You know, it's one thing to send out a bunch of cute remote-controlled robots and talking cards to the media and launch an ad campaign with a clever slogan like, I can't, but Droid does. And it's quite another thing to build a better mousetrap, or in this case, a better smartphone. What's up, everybody? I'm Noah from PhoneDog.com. And you know what? Verizon, you asked for it with those ad campaigns that say, I can't, but Droid does. So we're going to give it to you. It's a phone dog dogfight between, you know, honestly, the reigning champ of the smartphone market, the Apple iPhone 3GS. I'm not saying it's the best phone out there. I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying it is right now at the top of the sales charts. iPhone 3GS versus the new kid on the block, the Motorola Droid from Motorola, Verizon, and Google. Uh, also launched in Europe is the Milestone with slightly different, couple different features, different specs, whatever. But in the U.S., it's the Droid, Motorola, Verizon, Google. It hits the stores this Friday, November 6th. So, you know, a couple days ahead of time so you can help make your, uh, you know, whether it's buying choices or just rooting choices, we're going to give it to you dogfight style. Droid, iPhone, and uh, you know what? R2, you're going to have to stay outside the ring for this one. You can be a manager like Bobby the Brain Heenan, but no outside interference, all right? We're going to settle this one fair and square in the ring. By the way, special thanks to our friends at Best Buy Mobile. I'm going to get the promo out of the way as quickly as I can here. we got to pay the bills, you know. we got we got to pay the bills so we can make these videos for you. And Best Buy is helping out by uh, giving us a couple of droids to give away on the site. So check that out on phonite.com. We're going to have a couple of droids to give away to some lucky reader, lucky viewer. So there you go. And uh, just to let you know, Best Buy Mobile has this thing called Walkout Working. You buy a phone there, they help you set it up, they help you get your contacts and all that stuff set up. They help you uh, learn how to use all the features, and on these new phones like Droid, believe me, there's a ton of features. So they help you get all that stuff happening, and then, you know, while you have the phone, you can come back to them and say, how do I get a new ringtone on there? How do I switch things up? I have a new email account, whatever, they'll help you out with it. So there you go. Thanks to Best Buy Mobile. But enough with the promo stuff. On to the, dro the do I almost said the drog fight. The dog fight. Droid, iPhone, let's get to it. All right, so here we go. On the left, Apple iPhone 3GS running on AT&T. On the right... Motorola Droid running on Verizon. Uh, the preliminaries to get out of the way, pricing. Droid, $199.99 on contract. Uh, iPhone 3GS, 16 gigabyte model, $199 on contract. 32 gigabyte, which this is, this is a 32 gigger, uh, $299 on contract through AT&T in the US. Uh, the Droid ships with a 16 meg, uh, gigabyte micro SD card. So, you know, your $200 price point, basically the same in terms of the device and the storage capacity. And then in terms of your cost of ownership, monthly service, that kind of stuff, uh, pretty much the same over a two-year lifespan running iPhone 3GS on AT&T or the Droid on Verizon. If it's monthly value you're looking for, you're looking in the wrong place. You want value, uh, go get yourself a, a Hero or a Pre on Sprint or a Click or a uh, MyTouch on T-Mobile. Um, you're going to have a, a, you know, more bang for your buck in terms of monthly services and stuff. But anyway, so in terms of pricing and, and that kind of thing, you know, these two phones relatively, you know, pretty much the same. Um, iPhone, you get a headset in the package. Droid, you don't. You know, that, that's kind of it. Uh, in terms of voice quality, uh, roughly the same. They're both good, not the best voice quality I've ever heard, but both uh, good when you have a good network signal. And that's very dependent on where you are and, you know, uh, what the coverage is like where you are. Verizon's running ad campaigns. Um, you know, there's a map for that, uh, poking fun at AT&T's 3G coverage or lack thereof. Where I live and work in the San Francisco, California area, uh, I live and work in the East Bay mainly, but, you know, I'm all over the place for different things. AT&T coverage has, is not very good. Uh, drop a lot of calls, uh, messages take a while to get through, that kind of thing. It's an ongoing thing. Verizon performs much better where I am. Where you are, that may not be the case. So again, it, it is subjective. When calls connect and qual signal quality is good, they both do pretty well. Uh, Droid has a very loud speakerphone, louder than iPhones for sure. So there you go. Uh, what else? Hardware design, you know, it's subjective. Um, Droid obviously has the slide out hard QWERTY keyboard, which iPhone does not. They both have uh, virtual keyboards. We'll get to that a little more later on. They both have capacitive touchscreens. Droids is physically larger and has a higher resolution. Um, so a little bit of an edge to Droid in terms of the screen quality, I would say. 
Uh, in terms of the touchscreen performance, iPhone 3GS is to me is a little bit, just, just a tiny bit more responsive, but it also has uh, true multi-touch, meaning that on iPhone 3GS, if you're browsing the web, you can load up a couple websites here. Uh, on iPhone 3GS, you can do true, uh, you know, multi-touch throughout the phone. So in email, viewing photos, uh, web browsing, you know, you can do pinch and zoom and double tap to zoom and all that kind of stuff. Um, on Droid, you can now do double tap to zoom with Android 2.0, which is great in the web browser. I mean, you can double tap to zoom in and out, but you can't do pinch to zoom. On iPhone, you can. That's one of the hallmarks of iPhone. Uh, what's interesting is that on the European version of this, the Motorola Milestone, you can do uh, pinch to zoom in and out. So it's some kind of an American thing, possibly between Google and Apple with you know intellectual, intellectual property stuff. I don't know. Uh, Third-party apps can be written to take advantage of multi-touch on the Droid. And the Sprint Hero, or all versions of the HTC Hero, support multi-touch in the browser. So technically it's possible on this phone and on Android, but this implementation of it doesn't have it, so we'll have to see what happens in the future. But anyway, touchscreen responsiveness and overall touchscreen performance, a little bit of an edge to iPhone 3GS, but they're both very good. Both capacitive, both glass. Uh, they both look really nice. Again, I think the, uh, the Droid, let's load up the exact same image here this image of the HTC uh, Touch HD 2, which is running on PhoneDog today. Do the multi-touch, but you can get the plus minus zoom system. So we'll zoom way in. And yeah, this image gets pixelated uh, because of the, the density of the image itself. But again, they both look great. So there you go. Uh, moving on, we did mention, you know, on the hardware also, um, the design of the phone itself, the iPhone is a little more rounded, the Droid is a little more angular. The Droid is a heavier device. Uh, overall, size-wise, they're fairly similar in terms of footprint, but the Droid is noticeably heavier when you pick it up. Uh, of course, the Droid has this second layer with, you know, the sliding mechanism and the keyboard. A little bit of, the sliding mechanism doesn't really have a spring hinge, so it's, it's pretty heavy to slide open and shut. I don't really mind, some people I know do mind. Uh, there is wobble in the slider when it's shut and you play with it, but in terms of just using the phone, I didn't notice any wobble. I didn't really notice it until somebody asked me about it, and then I went like this, and I was like, oh yeah, it does wobble when it's shut. But, you know, in using it for a week now, I haven't had any issues with it, so I don't think it's really a problem unless you look for it. That said, uh, long term, over, you know, the lifespan of the device, uh, maybe, you know, a little bit of cause for concern... Uh, whereas with the iPhone, you know, it's just, it's just one layer, just a candy bar, so there's no slider mechanism to worry about. Uh, on the iPhone, you've got your rocker switch, your hardware mute switch. On the top, you've got a 3.5mm headph headphone jack, a lock key, SIM card tray on the top. On the bottom, you've got the uh, infamous Apple dock. On the back, 3.2 megapixel camera. Um, on the Droid, on one side, you've got your micro USB port, so one point there for the Droid for standard, you know, standard ports. If you forget your cable, it's just easier to hook up to a computer, that kind of thing. On the other side, rocker switch, dedicated camera key. Up on top, you've got your power lock switch and then your 3.5mm headphone jack, nothing on the bottom. On the back, 5 megapixel camera with flash. So we'll talk about the cameras for a second. And um, you might be surprised by this, but I actually give the camera edge to the iPhone. Uh, even though the Droid has more megapixels and it has a dual LED flash, um, you will be able to capture some photos in very dark conditions with the Droid that you won't on the iPhone because of the flash. So that, so that is true. But camera performance, I give the edge to iPhone. The iPhone camera is faster than Droids, which means that you can get more pictures. Um, I've been testing these things, and there was one point where I was trying to catch, you know, capture pictures of a baby. And if you ever tried to do that, if you ever, you know, hung out, if you have a kid or you hung out with a friend's kid, you try to take pictures, babies don't pose for pictures. They do stuff. And so you're like, oh, let me get the camera. It's cute. And sometimes you get it. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes they stay that way for a while. Sometimes they don't. And I had the droid handy, and I tried taking several pictures, and I kept missing them because the thing took so long to focus, to capture, and then especially to reload for the next picture iPhone is faster. 
So for my money, all the megapixels in the world don't matter if you can't catch the picture. Now, compared to other smartphones, other Android phones, Droid's you know, camera time is, is fine. So on that level, it's fine. But for the sake of the dogfight, for the sake of the comparison Verizon set up with their ad campaign, I give the edge to iPhone because the camera is just faster. And you know what? The megapixel thing, unless you're printing the pictures, it doesn't matter. 3.2 megapixels, 5 megapixels, they're both more than you need for posting your photos to social networking sites, for emailing them, for using them as computer, you know, desktop backgrounds and all that kind of stuff. And 3.2 is plenty for, for printing snapshot size ones. That said, when you get the picture right with Droid, it comes out pretty well and you have a little more detail than iPhone and it's a bigger picture so you can do more with it. But for day-to-day -day use, especially the 3GS with the 3 megapixel and then also the touch-to-focus system with the auto white balance, I just, I give the edge to iPhone um, here. As far as, uh, we'll actually show you, you know, it's one thing for me to talk about it, but here, let's load up the cameras and I'll show you what I mean. And maybe you'll think I'm crazy. Maybe you'll be like, dude, you're being too hard on, on the droid. It's not that big of a deal. Um, we'll go home. And you can see a little bit of a, it's kind of stuck in the gallery right now. What's going on here? Oh, crash. So Android 2.0, that's, you know, it's going to, it happens on iPhone too, but uh, once in a while you get an app that crashes. So we go to the camera, camera on both, and we'll take a picture of, uh, I don't know, let's take a picture of the Sony Ericsson box. And so at the same time, iPhone's ready to go. Droid, still not ready to go. Now it's ready to go. See, it just, it took a lot longer to snap and to get, whoops, and to snap and get ready for the next move. So we'll take another one here. One, two, three, go. You can see Droid's not ready. It's not responding as I'm moving it. Now it is. So, you know, I, again, definitely the edge to iPhone in terms of being a camera that you can really use all the time, um, which isn't going to matter to some people. Uh, video capture, it's a different story. Uh, Droid performed much better on video capture than it did on still photo capture. And Droid's resolution for video capture, a little bit higher, 720 by 480 as opposed to 640 by 480 for iPhone. So they both work, I think, very well for video capture as far as cell phones go, maybe a slight edge to the Droid. But overall on the camera, uh, iPhone is the winner here for me.